Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about Python's built-in max function. By the end of this video, you should have a great understanding of how to use this function within your Python programs. So for this video, we're gonna be using the Python console. As always, if you're using PyCharm, you can just come down to the bottom left-hand corner and click the Python console. But if you happen to not be using PyCharm, you can open up your terminal, and all you have to do is type in Python to follow along with this video. In the last video, we talked about the min function, but in this one, we're gonna talk about the max function. They're very similar. They're just gonna do the exact opposite of each other. So again, we're gonna use the variable a and create a list filled with a bunch of random integers. Let's go two, five, eight, 44, 62, and let's throw in 99 again, or then we'll throw a seven in there too, might as well. So we throw in the max function, max of a, and you'll see that we get the value of 99 because 99 is the greatest value within this iterable. Another thing we're able to do with the max function is compare strings instead of integers. So if we redefine our a variable and we just throw in a bunch of strings in here, we'll do e, let's throw in a p, and then we'll do a j as well, and let's throw in an r. Should be long enough. So we find the max value within here, it's just gonna return the greatest value or the furthest along within the alphabet. So in this case, it's R. Now where this starts to get a little bit more interesting is when we're starting to compare this with longer strings, so like names. So we had B, and if we use the list that we had last time, so we had, I think we had Jill in there, we had Tim, and I believe it was Robert. Yeah, that looks right. So we have B and it's filled with a bunch of names. We can find the max value of this, which is just gonna return the name that is the greatest value when this list is alphabetically ordered. So in this case, it's Tim because T comes after J and R in the alphabet. So that's it for this video. Real quick one, this function shouldn't be too hard to understand, but if you do have questions, just leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.